Today in the news, Intel made some pretty big changes to their GPU plans and we got some paparazzi shots of both their nude CPU and a GPU. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Alright, so I was supposed to post a video about Team C's on Friday, but I got sick and 99% uh, of what was in my script was covered by Mark Rober, so no dice. But still, consider donating to the Team C's initiative to clean up our ocean. One dollar removes one pound of trash out of the ocean, and the goal is 30 million pounds of trash. That's close to 700,000 MSI Secura 500X cases. And if you watch GN, you know that it's trash. Oh, and did you know that they use bubble barriers to direct plastic trash towards collection points? I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Anyways, let's get into today's video. And to start, we have Intel. A lot of CPU news have popped out lately, but it's been a while since we've heard anything about the Alchemist GPU. First, it looks like the company is going to abandon their machine learning and media optimized data center GPUs. We've heard a lot about their Arctic Sound platform, AKA the XEHP platform. And Raja Kuduri recently confirmed that it will be used as a software development platform internally, but they don't intend on actually make it a product for you know consumers or prosumers or data centers. In fact, this tiled GPU has evolved into both XEHPG and HPC products. So anyways, those XEHPG GPUs will be spread across the gaming, workstation, and the data center market. This is a little scary since these are manufactured at TSMC. So all of those dyes being scattered means less for us, the gamers. That's because XEHP was supposed to be built in-house using Intel's 10 nanometer enhanced super fin process, later renamed Intel 7. Let's at least hope that their plans of making this chip in multiple tiles also comes to market. If I recall correctly, the four tile version of the XEHP config had a TDP of around 400 to 500 watts, which sort of would be in line with future generations of AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. That's a lot of power, but it's not something that's unheard of. Something else that we have is actual photos of Intel's upcoming Alchemist series of GPUs. These photos come from none other than Moore's Law is Dead, who had previously posted renders of the card and the two are extremely similar. This time, we have a photo of both the front and the back of the GPU. Now, first of all, I want to ask you guys, do you like the design? I mean, personally, I hated the black version. It looks so plasticky, but this silver variant is kind of growing on me. In terms of specs, we're still on the usual track, a maximum of 512 EUs, which should be one tile, for the highest end model and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. In terms of power, with its one eight pin and one six pin connector, we can assume a TDP of around 225 watts, which means that it's around RTX 30 70 or RX 6700 XT levels of power. Moore's Law is Dead also shared renders of the uh, lower end 128 execution unit variant, and that one just looks a little silly to me. It's like they just cut the previous card in half. What do you guys think? Is it a yay or a nay? Then in Alder Lake news, it looks like there are two different die variants depending on the core count uh, for their CPUs. This is different since Intel usually uses the same die across the entire lineup and just bins them into different core configurations. The big die is one with up to eight P cores and eight E cores. The small die will feature up to six P cores and zero E cores. This six core config would allegedly be for something like the i5-12400, which I am calling right now will be the new budget king option for sub $250 CPUs. This strategy of splitting the die in two lines allows for more CPUs to be available in the lower end, since more dies can be printed on a wafer. Also, thanks to 
to devour, we can see how much the Intel 7 architecture really helped slim down the size of the big cores. And in holy crap, how did I not know this existed? Teenage Engineering, which I know from my audio engineering and music making times, made a computer case. Not only that, but they've been making them for a while, different models every couple of years. What's even more insane is actually building the thing, because they come in a flat packed box and essentially work like that laser cut cyber truck that Zach at Jerry Riggs Everything was uh, promoting a while back. So basically you have perforated lines and you have to fold it up. Now, yes, it's pretty cool, but one bad fold and you kind of ruined the whole case. It's sold out right now, but the retail price is $195 USD. It's not really worth the money. It's more of an art piece, kind of like every teenage engineering product. They do the work that they're supposed to, but they also just look cool, so they just jack up the price. But I'm kind of curious. Do you think that this kind of design should be more common? The one where you build your own uh, PC case by folding and you know rotating and screwing things around? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it. A dollar to Team C's. It's, it's, it's a good cause. I dropped 10. Uh, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Yeah, seriously, I did have a whole script and then poof, Mark Rober came out with his video. We were all supposed to post at the same time, but then I got sick. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Take care, guys. Have a, hope you had a great weekend.